Great. So I am very happy to be here with uh, all of you. And it was great uh, knowing about you. I am Dr. H. O. Srivastava. And as uh, you already know that I am a former additional director general of All India Radio and Doodarshan in Government of India. Um, now, it is India. Good afternoon. So, good afternoon, India time. And it is a great honor to deliver this lecture in this international webinar series of e-lectures on, on the topic role of community radio in community empowerment and rural development, which is being organized by ALDO. In community area. Yes, yes. Now, community radio, it plays a very significant role at the grassroots level for rural development. For example, it can address the issues of poverty, gender inequality, education, social problems, among others. The great advantage is you can address your community in your own language and it can be received on a receiver which may cost just one dollar. It provides participatory communication techniques that supports agriculture extension. I just saw my friend from Pakistan who is uh, who are working in agriculture and uh, it's a great uh, tool for them so that you can communicate directly with farmers and listeners groups. We will show in this presentation a few innovative uses which has resulted in significant impact in the areas of farming and education, addressing directly SDG 2030. All my friends must be knowing that Sustainable Development Goal 2030 is certain goals which we are supposed to attain by 2030, which addresses removal of poverty, removal of hunger from the globe, maintaining the climate, and so on and so forth. So most of the goals can be addressed by using community radio because the first requirement is people must know how, what is SDG 2030 and what are its goals and what can they do really. Now we all know broadcast and ICT they are shaping the economy and society today. Again, I will restrict myself today to broadcasting and especially community radio. When we talk of broadcasting, it can be categorized into public service broadcasting, just like the Doordarshan that we have in India or BBC. To which I, to where I worked for 37 years, and it is mostly a state controlled or state funded broadcasting system. Then there are commercial or private broadcasting, which are the business enterprises, and the frequencies are auctioned by the government and purchased by private people to run their broadcasting. Now, today we are going to discuss about the community broadcasting. Community broadcasting is done through community radios and in India and many of the places in the world, the licenses are given free to non-profit organizations, NGOs and universities, colleges, etc. The community radio is supposed to provide bias to biasless. Now, some of the salient features of the community radio are 
conviviality and culture. Conviviality stands for friendliness. So it is a radio which acts as your friend. And it can address many of the issues as I discussed earlier, education, strong democracy, health and well-being, economic equity, opportunity and sustainability. And it's an ideal framework for community development. We will see in the next slide that if we go little into the history of the broadcasting, community radio broadcasting, then we can divide the era in four categories, 1900 to 1940, that was experimental era, 1950 to 1960, that was wildfire era, 1970 to 1980, the solitary era, and 1990s to today is the insurgence era. 1900 to 1940 was the era where people started experimenting with community radio. It was not licensed. People just started establishing some community radio without any license. And they started experimenting how can they address certain issues. Next era was 1950 to 1960, which we called a wildfire era, where many people across the world established community radio, still without license, and it was to address to the farmers or coal miners, and they also call it a pirate radio. Then government started recognizing the potential of the community radio. And in 1970 to 1980, most of the countries in the world started making the licenses, providing the licenses, regulating it. And almost all the countries in the world started establishing community radio for addressing local people and right from Canada to America to US to Japan, a lot of places the community radio is established. And as of now, almost all the countries, they are having stations, the community radio station. There are regulations that has developed in most of the countries of the world. And there are a number of associations which have been formed to address the issues of community radio together about licensing and its establishment. <clears throat> now, Uh, sir, is, everything is okay? Hello? No eyes, please. No eyes. Hello, Dr. Srinivasa? Is there a problem with the virus? Yeah, yeah, now it is okay. Now it is okay. We no. can hear. All right. So, what I was trying to show in this figure, uh, how we got in India the regulation for the community radio. And I was pivotal in getting the license, which uh, was uh, initiated by Madam Shushma Soraj, who was our Minister of Information Broadcasting, and Sri Anil Bajal, who was 
Additional Secretary of Ministry of INB at that time. And what happened is she wanted that, okay, can we have community radio in this country? How many and how? And then the entire plan was done by me, making what we call a lattice plan, where I want how many community radio stations can be established in India. And uh, at that time, we rolled out about four to 5,000 community radios. What should be the power? What should be the technology to be used? And whom it should be given? So in India, we got the regulation in December 2002, which permits NGOs and universities, colleges, educational institutes, and Krishi Vikas Kendra, which are the four, uh, four uh, science units, they can establish community radio in the country. Now, here I am showing a bit of community radio station, a diagram, and you will find that in a community radio station, it's a very simple system. We are having a small production studio. This is this has been taken from a real community radio station, which was established in one of the agriculture universities in Haryana by us. And it was inaugurated by Honorable Chief Minister at that time, Shri Huda. So one small studio, which is known as a production studio. And in this production studio, people can sit, they can discuss, they can talk, they can play music, they can uh, have all sub discussions about farming, agriculture, advice, etc. And then there is another studio known as recording income transmission studio. So here it is recorded and either stored for future transmission or if you want to do a live broadcasting, then you can put it to transmitter and then to a tower and antenna and then it can be received on a, any a small radio, including the mobile phones, which normally has FM broadcasting provisions. Now, it depends upon the countries, how much power they want to give to the community radio, because these licenses are free. And in India, we decided to give a power of 50 watt only. And we also restricted the tower height to 30 meters. So with 50 watt transmitter and 30 watt meter height of the tower, we can cover about 10 to 15 kilometer radial area from the place where we establish it. Unfortunately, in India also, we have not gone very fast with the community radio stations and about 700 licenses have so far been granted in the country. And they have either been established or they are in the process of establishment. However, we are trying to establish more number of community radio stations in the country so that it is used for socio-economic development of the people, especially in rural areas and remote areas. This is a small technology. So it's never a very tough one. You have some mixer and then we have some uh, PC where you record it and then you can store it or broadcast it using some software that is known as radio broadcasting system. A good feature is that you have, you can connect a telephone where you can make it interactive. Your listeners can ask questions and you can reply to it. So this way there can be direct interaction between the broadcaster and the listener. After we established in the initial days, a few community radio stations, 
our ministry of IT, ministry of uh, communication and it they funded establishment of five radio stations in five straight agricultural universities in different linguistic regions to see the impact of the community radio on farming community this work was taken by world development foundation and five radio stations were established one is what we sh showed in the last slide that is in hisar agriculture university haryana which was inaugurated by cm there the second was done in chhattisgarh you can see that again here the chief minister is inaugurating the the community radio stations then it was third was done in up again the state agriculture university fourth was done in agriculture university coimbatore tamil nadu agriculture university and fifth was done in rachi so five community radio stations were established in five community regions certain programs was developed people were trained and then the technology of farming that was disseminated is using the community radio stations and after one year a survey was done to know the compact the impact of these community radio stations and we found that it had great impact on the farming community they started adopting some new technology they started using new type of seeds and fertilizers going to organic farming etc and then we went to minister of agriculture in government of india and minister of agriculture government of india they agreed to fund any community radio station which is done for farming purposes by krishi vikas kendras or agriculture universities and it is an approved scheme of government of india and it is funded by government of india for farming communities another one we tried to do it something outside from india and we established seven community radio stations in seven corners of ethiopia you see the places all corners of ethiopia north and addis ababa and it was done for socio economic development and also educating the people in certain areas of health hygiene including farming they allowed us to establish community radio stations using 700 watt of power and which was covering about 50 km radial area because the topology was also good in ethiopia so all these places we established and uh, there was a great impact and recently they have they have written a paper in academia and they so they are telling that the community radio station working for the last 5 years and it is having great impact on the people and on the places where they have been established in fact when we established and i was troubling to uh finote selam from addis ababa and a lot of people from ministry of communication it and other people were traveling with me and when we reached just near the place finote selam 50 km away and then we started getting the signal people were so excited they came out of the car they started dancing they were so happy that okay they are having a channel for communication and i visited this place this lady was the administrator there and she promised that okay we will take it up and do it seven community radio stations were established within a period of 2 months after receipt of the equipment and 
uh, this is the appreciation which came from ambassador in Ethiopia about these community radio stations. We also established some community radio stations in Nepal, uh, very few. The power is still higher, about three kilowatt were there. Now, community radio station technology is very simple. You have to have one small studio with a little treatment if you can afford it and simple equipment with a tower and transmitter, it can be done. What is more important is to create compelling content for the community radio station. And all of you who listen to radio station know that a radio station is having something known as signature tune, which is the identity of the community radio station. You also have a cue sheet, which is a time schedule, which is a time schedule of each and every program. Then it is a tool which you can use for social development. You can use it for livelihood generation, self-employment. You can use it for farming and agriculture or any allied field. Animal husbandry. You can also let people know their rights and privileges and maybe duties also. You can have women programs. A lot of employment was generated in UP by giving some programs to women farmers in making pickles and how to market it. You can have question and answer sessions. You can do it on health and hygiene. The students can also be used for career guidance. You can teach them what a democracy. And as I always talk, that SDG 2030 can remain only a distant dream. Who knows about SDG 2030, especially in the remote corners in many countries of the world. So unless it is funded from some agencies, including government, and people know about it and know small steps to do to maintain climate, to use organic food, to use less water. So unless they are trained and their attitude is changed towards the climate, towards maintaining hygiene, health, etc., SDG 2030 will not be possible to be achieved. So this is one step to go ahead. When we create content, it has to be not only done by experts, but the local people and farmers must participate. This is why we call it a participatory communication. They should come, they should talk to the other people. And some of the things, if you will find that, you see the first diagram where a honey seller with 30 years working in the field was called in Tamil Nadu Agriculture University. And she was able to narrate what she is doing it. And then universities could tell what better she could do it and where can she get market for selling it. So such type of programs can be done. Uh, you will find here the village development programs has been done. Here, the administrative people, they are being called in the studio and they are being confronted with the issues being faced by many of the citizens of the place and they have to apply it. So it's a, it's a great way of creating two-way communication in fixing responsibility in training. So content is a very important thing and it has to be part and parcel of the community radio. You can see that, and as I told that, content has to be in the field, not sitting in the studios. So you can see the World Development Foundation producer going and talking to the coupler. What can he do? What can be done? His story, can it be broadcast? <coughs> Here they are doing with the women farmers. 
this is again with the farmers, women farmers. So it has to be done. And this type of content has to be in the local language, most probably with the local people. And then if you go on putting this content slowly with their involvement, then you are going to make a real, real impact of the community radio. I have given a link here, http wfindia.org publicradio.stm where we have put some contents which has been done in different linguistic uh, regions in different languages and you can just see what type of content can be done on farming and health and hygiene and tourism and so many issues that people confront and they can't approach anywhere for the knowledge Training a personnel for operation and management of community radio is also a very important part of uh, community radio. And when we do it, this was the training which I've done very recently for the people who came from one of the university. I will just in the next slide, I will touch how the community radio reach can be extended if universities are involved. And they have to know about the presentation skills, what are the broadcast code and policy, how to make recording, editing, stories, archiving, how to make a playlist, how to schedule it, how they can broadcast it. Also a little about maintenance of hardware and software. They have to also learn about online broadcasting, which I will talk a little later in the next slide perhaps. And if they are going to do online broadcasting, then how can they upload the audios to the server, a bit of coding about the playback, what is on demand, cloud radio and streaming. Uh, cloud radio is something that has been developed by us, which allows your entire university premises to receive the content without internet. Then mobile application, mobile is so common. So there must be more. I use you to broadcast to an area of about 10 to 15 kilometers in a place like India. In many countries where hard transmitters can be allowed, as I talked about Ethiopia, then of course it can go about 50 kilometers or so. Is it possible to extend it? Yes. If here is a university, it is possible to create a local cloud and all the people will get the content on their mobile without using internet. You can also connect it to, of course, internet and therefore you can do broadcast through internet and it can go through the world, which can be received on any digital receiving device. And this type of concept we recently used for one of the university this is Kuch Bihar Panchanan Burma University in West Bengal. Now, this was a system which we developed over the community radio, especially keeping in view the problems of COVID because the classes were suspended in the university and people were not able to attend the classes. So what we did is we have a normal community radio, of course, with the tower and like that. So 10 to 15 kilometer coverage. The entire university premises was made Wi-Fi so that you don't have to bring all the students into the class because you will not be able to provide enough space and still provide isolation. Therefore, they can be anywhere in the university, they can be in anywhere uh, in any class 
or in the hall or even in the field and they can receive the lecture on demand or also streaming lectures. Now you are having three types, cloud radio, community radio, internet radio. <clears throat> now these lectures can be received using a mobile phone, cloud radio using Wi-Fi and of course internet radio, radio using normal IP services. The other advantage is that using internet radio, we cover their 15 colleges. The university has got 15 affiliated colleges. So whatever you are teaching from here, now any student, irrespective of its, the location of the college, is able to get your streaming lecture on his mobile phone, even sitting from his house. That is a great advancement. And he, all the 15 colleges don't have to deliver lecture separately. If the subject is same and the class is same, lecture at one place can cover all the places. There is interactivity also using WhatsApp. So apart from telephone, which provides phone in interactivity for community radio, you can have WhatsApp messages can be given and the professor can respond immediately or later on or by writing through WhatsApp chat, whatsoever he wants it. So this is an extension of the community radio where you are covering all your colleges, all your students and they are able to get it from anywhere in the world and we call it happy radio based solution for education. And this is the picture of some of audio video studios and the media production center. This can be have everybody doesn't need to have all these uh, solution. But if you show it here, this is called sound clock because you have a beautiful sound lock. You can enter here to, to the production studio or the other studio. So this is one facility which is used. These are two audio studios. One was done in Rajkot and the other was done in, uh, I think, Gangtok. So two audio studios. The media production center is used if you are a bigger university and you want to make some video production also then you are having a um, you are having a camera three camera studio and then the production control room and edit room and like that so this type of thing was also done for agriculture knowledge dissemination system in bihar state and it was got done for government of bihar and then, of course, as we do, we do a lot of national, international seminar workshops like this are great help uh, for not only propagating and talking about certain problems and the solutions that can be done, but also about the SDG 2030. And I say that the main components of SDG 2030 is education and agriculture. In fact, we had one with uh, Secretary General Aldo presiding here uh, very recently before the lockdown. So this is the footprint of uh, some of the places that we uh, put community radio stations and which have put a great impact on the people and socioeconomic development. Most of the countries in the world, as on date, are having their rules and regulations but if some country doesn't have the rules and regulation then WDF and ALDO can help them in establishing the rules and regulations for that country. WDF and ALDO can also help if you want to get consultancy or establish community radio stations 
our media production centers, then we can help you in establishing it as we did for Ethiopia and uh, provide you the knowledge about it. Community radio doesn't cost much. It can be very economical as well as it can be uh, more complex as I showed it for the university. And it depends upon the needs, how many you are going to put it, what is the rules and regulation of the country and how you want to cover, what is the footprint that you want for the people and in which locations. So this is basically about the community radio. I have not gone to get a depth of technology because I thought to give you a good glimpse of what community radio can do. And especially in those areas which are unapproachable, where papers are not available, where other type of media is not available, where print is not there, the commercial people will never go there. Community radio is tool because you get the licenses almost free. So this was the presentation which I wanted to talk to you. And I'll be very happy to have uh, your questions uh, on the community radio or related issues. And so I am cutting the sharing. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Uh, thank you, Dr. for a very thoughtful presentation. And in your presentation, you have covered the history, various types of the community radios, the success story of the agriculture community stations. Then you also focus on the content that how the content is to be developed. And in any participatory development, community participation is very important. So these uh, community radio stations they are also involved in the community participation. So you see the yes. both way, community versus the decision maker. So very nice presentation. And you also spoke about the cost that is not very costly equipment, but again, depend on the country policy. And the policy yes. may differ from country to country. The yes. maybe other member country may consider about the relevance and significance of the community issue. Utilization, especially in agriculture, extension, agriculture marketing, health, sanitation, education. These are the areas where we can really utilize the services of the community videos. Now, yes. this part, I just looking for the question answer. If the participants have question, please raise your question one by one. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Baldev Singh Negi from Himachal Pradesh. I am here uh, at the Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla, uh, yes. as faculty of rural development, sir. So I just uh, want to thank uh, you for your wonderful presentation, sir. Uh, I, I was just looking, uh, I was just curious to know about this. Uh, you know, uh, community radios implementation and uh, benefits. So you have uh, very uh, wonderfully explained. Uh, yes, but just I I have one question that uh, uh, how is the total cost of uh, this community radio if uh, uh, we are willing to establish it in the remote area at uh, covering at least at five kilometer area or uh, radius? So how how will be the cost, sir? Tentative process. Since I am also associated with, uh, uh, I am also associated with All India Radio at uh, Shimla because I am uh, means giving programs uh, in local dialects uh, since uh, last 2009 in one of the dialects along with my uh, professional work at University of But still, still I, I I was asking many of people, but they were not able to give me answer that how how will remain the cost of this uh, community radio. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> Great to know. Uh, and uh, see, if you want to have just a small community radio, uh, as I told that really it requires to know uh, your requirements. 
if you want to have a small community radio station cover an area of about 5 to 10 kilometers then the cost will be about about 25 to 30 lakhs okay because uh, you know some small studios are, and uh, because you are university you will not like to have just untreated room where we put the equipment we can do it it can go even down depending upon what you really want so once uh, you know you come to the layer we discuss uh, either in ardo office or wdf office uh, we can work out uh, the real cost but and what happens is when i discuss with you i also discuss that supposing if i tell that okay this is about 30 lakhs uh, and you say that I don't want UPS, I already have having it. Uh, I don't want a PC, it is already available to that. So once we discuss it, we will see what are the things we can cut down. So many places, people don't need UPS, they are having a stable power supply, many people need to be a must. Many people will need diesel generator, many people will not need diesel generator, depending on the power supply. PCs you may need, or you are already having in the lab, so we will cut down. So depending upon that, we can discuss what is the cost. And I always tell that it can be tailored to your budget. Whatsoever you want, it can be done it. And um, you can start it immediately if you want, the, as I was telling, cloud radio or internet radio, straight away. For community radio license, it takes some time. You have to go to government and get the license. And um, some time it may take, but uh, we can work out. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. One uh, community radio far a radius of five kilometers will cost about twenty to twenty-five lakh rupees. So far the yes. of the international participant, it comes around thirty thousand US dollar. Yes. Yeah, approximately thirty thirty thousand US dollar. So this is the small amount they can uh, consider. Thank you, sir. Okay, yes. Next question, please. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Doctor. There is a one question from Doctor Sabina Fatima. She wanted to know how that uh, we we can assess the impact of these community radio, especially with the reference to agriculture. Yes, <clears throat> what we do is really we have two surveys. One survey is done initially, and especially when in case of agriculture. Uh, already, if you are an agriculture university or a agriculture science uh, college or something, you know about the farmers, what technology they are using right now, what are their problems. And then some of the things we start creating, you know, programs and telling them that, okay, you are doing this uh, type of, uh, you know, uh, vegetable this year and you could not market so by you can tell that you come up with this vegetable you use this type of fertilizer you can get this loan from here and after that you again have two or three surveys afterwards whether people have adopted it has their revenue increased has their profit increased unless this impact is judged Absolutely, it will become ineffective. So it's not that you just install community radio station, hardware has been put and content has been done, it is over. No. And this is why in India, government um, of India, Ministry of Agriculture, they fund the entire scheme. They say that you install the community radio. They also say that you create the content. They say that you have two impact analysis after one year and two years and show that how it has improved the way farming was done earlier and now has the yield increased if we are not able to show that yield has increased or the milk production has increased are they unable to get access to the banking or marketing services then absolutely there is no impact so at least a sample will have to be surveyed before the installation of the community radio and at the end of the uh, project, say after six months, after one year, and once you found the impact is there. And when we did the survey, and we do all the times, 
when we did the survey, we find that yes, there is an impact. And once people, you know, people are always um, interested in getting profit. If he is able to earn more food, uh, increase the yield, and increase his uh, in a production, then definitely we'll be using the technology. They are very sensitive to adopting the technology. In fact, what they do is when you are having the phone in program in the community radio, in the morning they start ringing that my plant has got disease, what should I do? And as a scientist, this is why they have allowed this only in agriculture universities and agriculture science centers. So as a scientist, he says that, look here, this is a problem, tell me what to do. And you will He comes after two weeks, he starts abusing you that it has not helped it. And I have seen this thing happening. He comes and says, it has not happened. Give me the solution. So the other people also becomes very conscious. When I'm talking from here, I must know my thing. Otherwise, I will not want to do it. So that creates, you know, the impact both ways. Even the teacher, the scientist, the lecturer, they have to study, they have to give the solution. So this type of thing has to be done. This is the impact analysis we did on the fine vestige and put to government of India. And this is why they do a funding of 65 lakhs per community radio station, government of India. Thanks. Next question. किलोमीटर and we want to expand that to next 5 million kilometers so how that cost will be varies on that one because we installed the infrastructure and we got the that 5 kilometers got success then after that we want to expand for another 5 kilometers actually we don't you know we don't um, tell you to go for 5 kilometers because government of india as per the present regulation gives you a sanction for 50 watt power and 30 meter tower okay and they also give the sanction for 24 hours many people say i want only for six hours of broadcast take the sanction for 24 hours you can extend it tomorrow so number one is when you we go for sanction we'll be getting for the full power 50 watt and then we will be doing it for 30 meter tower we will also not tell you that you put a 15 meter tower and then again extend 15 meter more. Right. There is no use of doing it. It will save you 3 lakhs, then 2 lakhs or 3 lakhs you will save and again. Power is standard power which is manufactured in this country. Right. If you want to have lower distance means I reduce the power either by reducing the height of the tower or by reducing the power of the transmitter by put by losing the power yeah. so what we recommended you go for 10 to 15 kilometers yeah. it will cause the same thing okay. don't come after 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 one year or six months you are getting it and they have already done uh, you know they, are, they have not become very liberal because i made the uh, the entire licenses for that and the power i decided it we wanted to put 5000 community radio station so i saw that if i put a 50 watt transmitter here, then I, I have to get to another person. So you are getting for 10 to 15 kilometer, take for 10 to 15 kilometer. There is no point that I reduce 2 lakhs and then again after, uh, you know, 5 months or 6 months you increase it. And that is not beneficial to it. So I did not tell him this thing, but generally the sanction you take the whole one. If you want it, okay, have a lower tower and then increase it. So it will increase one or 2 lakhs rupees, that's all. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, there is one more question in the chat box. 
they wanted to yes. know that uh, what are the security aspects of transmission can a third party interface uh, or change the content of the content of the info being transmitted <coughs> You see, there are two types of security. One is the physical security of the transmitter. Like a transmitter should not go to unwanted people. Right. So when you apply for a license, it is it goes to home ministry and they check the place. So, you know, earlier they were not giving to the places where the areas was uh, Naxal areas or like that. So it has to be cleared by home ministry. Then only the license is given. That and physical security you have to keep in the law. So that is the physical security. As far as content is concerned, there is known as a broadcast policy. In fact, it is called All India Radio Code. The code said, when you will get the license, there will be a memorandum of understanding between the parties concerned, means Government of India and say Himachal Pradesh if they want to take uh, this license. So there will be MOU. And in that they will write that you will not use this community radio station for any broadcast will be against the interest of the government and uh, interest of the country. That's all. You will not be using it anything which will spoil the relation with a you know neighboring country. So those sort of things you assign. One day you have to follow that. That's all. Informing content whether Aldo makes and gives it or WDF makes and gives it or he gets from a neighbor, it is up to you. In fact, it is always participatory. You have to call a farmer from the field, ask her or him to sit in the studio, tell the story, and then let people learn from it. Okay, so content, no restriction, except if the content is abusive, they don't allow you to advertise wine or something like that. So some code of conduct. Uh, there is one more question that is, uh, what about the recurring cost to NGO? How to earn for community radio to run? Yes. Uh, you know, this was a problem which was faced by many of the NGOs when it was done. Uh, and now two channels have been allowed in India. Uh -huh. One channel is... Okay, one channel is that people can have advertisement for six minutes per hour of content. So every hour of broadcast, they will have six minutes of advertisement. They can get advertisement on anything. If, you, if they are, you know, for university, they can get for book or uh, anybody. And if they are for farming community, they can have on seeds, fertilizer, bag, this and that. So they can collect advertisement on their own. But we found that it was not enough. So government of India has also allowed government advertisement compulsorily to be given to community radio stations so that they earn some money for its recurring expenses. Thank you, Dr. Dr. There is one question from the techno uh, camera. Uh, yes. Sir, you can ask the question now. Hello. Yes, sir. You can ask the question. Would you please ask the question? I think. Can you listen to the voice, Techno Camel? You can put on chat if you want. Okay. okay. Next question. Okay. Any other participants uh, may wish to ask uh, any questions, observations, informations? Uh, any participant? Okay. If not, uh, then uh, Professor Srivastava, I have one small uh, uh, curiosity to ask uh, one a question, sir. Now, in the age of internet, when we see the proliferation of information technology all over servers, even to the remotest area, I, I just wonder at my level, how do we see the role of community radio as an instrument to spread information vis-a-vis uh, -vis 
in relation to the internet which is already proliferated lots of people having these uh, gadgets of uh, cellular uh, uh, mobile phones in their hands also you know any radio stations you know or any channel that you are creating you have to create your audience and that audience comes because of the type of the program and you are able to let people know yes professor she is not able to listen okay yeah. now you know so as far as local people are concerned community radio 10 to 15 kilometers or cloud radio that is your captive audience so people will know it and this is why you see that when we inaugurated the community radio station we always called governor we called you know chief minister so that there is a um, uh, knowledge about it in paper in media in other things so it will happen for university you are already having a captive audience of the students uh, for internet radio of course uh, there is also they are creating a channel where you get a globe and on that you put your community radio and it will come so slowly of course you will have to address the audiences and they have to know about it and if they know they will come to your radio station there was one question from uh, dr hasina uh, that is uh, agriculture scientists community radio play an important role in farmers awareness regarding burning issues of course yes uh, you know in fact uh, many places it is called farm radio and farm radio is because you know lot of things can be addressed lot of people depend on the farming especially in our countries and if you are able to address the farmers they are the most poor people and uh, they are the people who have to produce uh, enough uh, food for all of us so it is very important if you put in the villages where the farming community is there and you are putting relevant content it is a wonderful thing to do it uh So, Mr. Ahmed, I'll let me also raise the hand. Um, Mr. Uh, Ahmed, that you can ask the question. Could you please? Mr. Ahmed. Mr. Ahmed, I'll let you. Can ask the question, yeah. please. Mr. Ahmed. This question. Yeah. Okay. I think it. Do you hear me, sir? Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, uh, firstly, I I want to thank uh, Doctor for a nice presentation and very informative. Uh, a local community, uh, a local community uh, radio. Uh, first, uh, I want uh, as you know in Egypt, uh, many oases and uh, many different regions uh, in uh, north and east uh, who have many uh, native languages. Uh, are you uh, see uh, if the community radio uh, can uh, connect it easily uh, with a native language uh, and this is different uh, uh, from uh, 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 common radio stations uh, and the second uh, how's the cost of to, uh, how's the cost of establish uh, community radio stations uh, for about uh, 30 uh, kilometers yes thank you I uh, I am not aware whether you have in Egypt you have got the regulation and your rules what they allow. So I will have to check whether a regulation has been established for in the in your uh, place Egypt and what the regulation allows. For example, as I told in Ethiopia, they have allowed the power of about seven hundred watt, which covers about fifty kilometer. so coverage depends upon the power of the transmitter the height of the tower and also your topology if you are plain field it will go a longer distance if you are having a hilly area then hill can block it or if you are having a very high rise buildings of course it may not be there so all these factors are there so generally a survey helps you 
where this is why i told that we can uh, help with uh, the help of our we can come and we can tell you what is the right type of power that you use for the community that you want to serve okay uh, please if you can contact with uh, us you can contact with uh, dr h shrastav i think my address was there but if you want to write i will write it here just write it. okay thanks sir my I, i i will give my address in okay okay so, yes uh, yes dear uh, participant just for the information that order has different activities and one of the important activities financing of the development project so if any participant feel the need that they need some support technical or in the sense of services of the expert so they can write through their government to ardo and ardo will be very happy to provide the services of some expert or technical support for the implementation of the project of course these projects are on the co financing basis it has to be cost has to be shared between the ardo government and sometimes community also so that formula we can work out but initially you can send the proposal to ardo thank you if any more question please if uh, no question uh, a yes, yes please yeah. uh i think dr hasina gul is having one question so ma'am you, you are welcome yeah please is there any facility or uh, any opportunity with you people to that uh, we visit to india and uh, to practically see all these uh, radio community radio installation community radios uh, practical uh, rooms and practical uh, uh, development yes madam uh, yes, right madam. Uh, as far as uh, i mean i mean i mean i mean i exposure visit any exposure visit you want to be conducted for we people to visit there and to see all these professor are you responding or shall i uh, see i am responding to the to the question saying that uh, uh, if their government or they themselves are out of finances their visit we can allow here to see the studios we can also train them for one or two days uh, to make how the studio operates and how it works and we do regular trainings also so we can include them in some training also just to add to professor response ardo also have a program study visit program for the member countries so study visit program from one member country to another can be organized on the request of the member country so in case uh, your government is interested for the visit exposure like visit it can be done once the international flight is resumed and the things become normalized so kindly do write to ardo and we will be very happy to receive and to consider that thank you okay with this uh, i think uh, we are approaching the time limit and uh, unless there are some more questions uh, i request either we can write to the auto secretary or we can write uh, to professor shrivasa also he has shared his email id and uh, before we conclude i wish to express my sincere thanks uh, to professor dr hari om shrivasta who has been kind enough to give a very excellent presentation on community radio with this uh, diversified experience of more than 50 years into this uh, area also so thank you very much sir for answering all the questions and giving a very good panorama of the community radio starting with the beginning of the history to the current status also so with this also i thank all my dear participants who have also spent uh, their times with us uh, to be with professor shrivastava listening his presentation as well as raising interesting queries questions observations also at the same time uh, ardo thanks the member countries who have sponsored the participants uh, to attend this uh, e lecture series also 
and i also thank my dear police chief that was secretariat and the guidance of his excellency secretary dr madhav nader singh uh, for doing this all excellent arrangements conducting this uh, similar session also and i do request you to kindly write to us at the auto secretariat in case of any further informations uh, or community radio or any other aspects or any other kind of activities you are interested to attend and uh, with this thank you very much to all and have a nice day thank you very much thank you thank you very much thanks to all everybody thank you sir thank you thank you. good bye sir bye bye Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.